Marcus Aurelius' Meditations is one of the most important, practically applicable guidebooks to living a good life. One of the most important books you can find anywhere. I rank it up there with Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. The Meditations, I'm going to run you through a series of principles and guidelines for how to unlock the power of the Meditations. I'm going to give you a couple of rules to follow, uh, but first I want to issue a challenge. When you read through the Meditations, please pop down one your one, your top favorite meditation that you can find, uh, pop it down in the comments below. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna crowdsource um, a communal reading of the meditations together. And once I have enough comments, I'll either do a podcast or another video. And you can either tell me what you think that, um, that meditation means to you. You can tell me how you've applied it to your life because yes, and we're gonna get into this. This is about application. We don't just read through the meditations for entertainment. I mean, it's, it's a fun book, but it's, it's not about that. It's a guidebook for how to live, how to lead, and how, how to live a life that um, makes you content, makes you happy, how to live a life full of purpose. So please do pop your favorite meditation down below. You can either, you can expound upon it if you like, tell me how that's, what that means to you, or just leave, leave the meditation as it is, and we're gonna crowdsource it together. Now, the interesting thing about the meditations was it was never meant to be read or consumed. Um, it was detailed in the private notebooks, the, the field battle journals of a great Roman emperor, one of the good Roman emperors. And this was him talking to himself. This was him providing counsel to himself, advice to himself, helping it, guiding him through the trials and tribulations of so essentially being an emperor and a general. Um, and so he never would have thought that it would have been read. So there's a good thing and a bad thing about this. The bad thing is that very often ideas are rehashed and so there's a lot of repetition. And the meditations, as you go through the books, you'll find that many of the, the sentiments are repeated, but in slightly different words. Now, so I don't actually think that's a bad thing, but that's just by virtue of the fact that this emperor, Marcus Aurelius, he was writing to remind himself, okay? He didn't have it all figured out. He really didn't. And he also didn't really have anybody he could go to for advice. He was talking to himself, reminding himself. He was not perfect. He did not write this for other people to follow. It was his private correspondence with himself, communing with a higher power and himself. Now, the benefit of that is it's brutally, fiercely honest. If you don't like some of the ideas that he touches upon, memento mori, he's continually reminding you, and by you, I mean him. He's reminding himself that his life is essentially coming to a close soon. He's aging, he hasn't got long left to live, and a lot of the principles are based on that. This is a bitter pill for many of us to swallow, understandably, um, but he's being brutally honest, and I think here, by virtue of the fact that he was given an advice primarily to himself, and never thought that his notebooks, his field notebooks would be read, um, we can benefit from some absolutely age-transcending advice. Now, the first principle I want you to keep in mind when you come to the meditations, this book of Stoic philosophy, and Stoic philosophy is the best philosophy because it's practically applicable to your life. A lot of other philosophy is not, um, and, but this very much is. It's about how to live. The first principle is set your intention before you come to the page and come to the page with a deep desire and thirst to improve and to live your best life. Come to the meditations with a sense that you're gonna be an active learner. Yes, this is a learning experience. You don't read the meditations for entertainment. Not really, though they are well written and interesting. You need to take them on board and practically integrate them in your life. So it's difficult. The meditations is a workbook. So you might want to engage with your sense of why. Whenever you want to form a new habit or boost your motivation, connecting with a deep, desire and a deep sense of why um, is important. So try to think of the different roles in your life, the different goals that you're pursuing. Maybe you are a parent, maybe you are uh, a child, <laughs> uh, someone else's son or daughter, maybe you're a sibling, maybe you're a teacher, maybe whatever job you're doing, maybe you're a partner, a spouse, um, maybe you're a community worker, wherever your goals and your roles and your vocations lead you, integrate the meditations and try and connect it to your deep why. Who do you want to be as a person? What's your vision for your life? Where there is no vision, the people perish. What do you want your life to look like? What, what do you want to be remembered for? What do you want to be known for? Connect all this together and then bring all that to the meditations. Now, when you come to read it, I would recommend that you read through relatively rapidly with a sort of a bird's eye approach 
initially. Okay, so now the first um, book, the meditations is split into multiple books, um, and they're only like a few pages a piece, and they're split up into maxims, each detailing a different facet of life wisdom that you might want to take on board. The first book is Marcus thanking his influences, showing some gratitude and you know that sort of thing. Um, you might want to skip that for a first reading and come back to it once you've um, appreciated the rest of the book, because the rest of the book is chock full of great practically applicable life advice. The first, not so much. So you might want to go to book two to start with. And what I would recommend is read book two all the way through and then don't go on to book three. Do not go on to book three. Read through just attentively and feel the sort of sway and pull and tug of where your soul is is pulling. There are going to be certain maxims that you want to alight upon more than others for one reason or another. Whatever station in life you find yourself in, whatever troubles, whatever trials and traumas and tribulations you're dealing with now, that's going to affect uh, or influence which of the maxims speaks out to you. So you've done that initial first reading of one book. Now what do you do? Next, I would recommend you read back over it thoughtfully, pausing often, pausing liberally, pausing at the end of every sentence, perhaps at the end of every word, and thinking, and read back over with a pen. And now when you find a point, a pertinent point, a point that you like for any reason, underline it, circle it, I like to underline, And but if you find a super pertinent point, really flag it up. I usually put like three line strikes next to it, or if it's stellar, like absolutely, uh, knocking it out of the park for me, I'll put a star next to it. So when you rifle through my books, you'll see there are a few pages dotted around that have stars next to the underlinings. The, this is where you're gonna return to yet again. And then from then on, you have to do the hard work and you have to start applying it to your life. Now, to make it easy, I would say just pick one of the meditations from the book you've just read, just the one, and then work on integrating it into your life or following its wisdom. Uh, for the next week or so. Now, I used to try to read the Bible, not in a religious sense, but because I saw it as wisdom literature and I wanted to get some guidance and some counsel. And I thought, hey, lots of people find comfort from the holy books all around the world, so why not? And I found that reading the Bible actually made me unhappy. It didn't actually soothe me or ameliorate any of my concerns. And I realized I was reading it wrong. Um, and so what I did was I decided that when I found a piece of a, a wisdom that I, want, that I liked, like, um, knock and the door shall be open, seek and, and ye shall receive. I would stop there and I would not read any more of the Bible. I would simply focus on integrating that into my life. And that worked wonders. I did a similar thing with um, Aristotle's ethics. Uh, similarly, um, Benjamin Franklin, he came up with a scheme of virtues that were based on the Aristotelian virtues, courage, uh, temperament, um, that sort of thing. Um, and he would just focus on one per week. He couldn't, he knew he couldn't adopt good clean living habits all simultaneously at the same time. It doesn't work like that. It's too overwhelming and it's, it just makes us prone to fail, but we can do one at a time. So for one week, he would focus on temperament. Or I believe he did it day by day. I don't know. Um, but either way, one by one. And then over time, he would cycle through. Uh, he would go through 12 or 13 of them. And by the end of the year, he'd done, he'd focus on each of them a handful of times and he had improved. So that's the hard thing is now you want to take it and apply it to a specific facet of your life. Now, let's read through just a, a small handful of some ones that I particularly like at this current moment. Uh, this is the first meditation from book two. Um, begin each day by telling yourself, this is a famous one, you might recognize it. Begin each day by telling yourself, today I shall be meeting with interference, ingratitude, insolence, disloyalty, ill will, and selfishness. All of them due to the offender's ignorance of what is good or evil. But, for my part, I have long perceived the nature of good and its nobility, the nature of evil and its meanness, and also the nature of the culprit himself, who is my brother, not in the physical sense, but as a fellow creature similarly endowed with reason and a share of the divine. Therefore, none of those things can injure me, for nobody can implicate me in what is degrading. Neither can I be angry with my brother or fall foul, of him, for he and I were born to work together, like a man's two hands, feet, or eyelids, or like the upper and lower rows of his teeth. To obstruct each other is against nature's law. And what is irritation 
or aversion, but a form of obstruction. Now, I'll let you know kind of what I circled and uh, flagged up when I read this. I underlined due to the offender's ignorance of what is good or evil. It's like that Jesus quote, isn't it? Forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. Now, when you're mired in it and you're surrounded by people who seemingly are just acting in a way that's going to hinder you, it's very hard to remind yourself of this. Now, it seems very easy when it's printed on the page, but remember that Marcus Aurelius himself had a lot of struggle and difficulty with this. How do we know that? By the fact that he keeps talking about it. He's had to overcome this. This is, this is something he's had to learn. He has to remind himself. Today I will meet with, and that's the thing. If you wake up each day, and I mean, we can have a whole discussion on positivity and optimism versus pessimism, but if you wake up thinking, the world is wonderful, I mean, that's probably a good mindset to have. But very often, you, you can be shocked at the abysmal, abhorrent <laughs> behavior of some people. And not being prepared for it can actually be more devastating than being prepared for it. If you say, today I'm gonna meet with people and hey, par for the course, some people don't really think too much about these issues of morality or how they operate in the world and that's fine. Then um, some people might be a bit selfish or some people might be mean to me. I'll accept it, they don't know what they do, they're not actually trying to do anything bad, they just haven't thought it through enough. Now, does this sound a bit egotistical? Perhaps to some people, I, I, don't, think, I don't think Marcus Aurelius was particularly egotistical, but then again, a Roman emperor, who could blame one if you were egotistical? I think this reveals a very sensitive soul, a very empathetic, caring human being, uh, who wants the best for the world and wants people to, to, to operate uh, well. And he doesn't want to be short with people, he doesn't want to lose his patience with anybody. He wants the best for himself. So is that egotistical? Okay, well, probably in the best possible sense. And then I underlined nature. I've long perceived the nature of good and its nobility. I, I circled that because when I read Aristotle's Ethics, there was a huge amount of detail going into uh, nobility. Um, so I thought, okay, let's connect that up. And then I made a note, paradigm fraternity. Because I, I try to come up with mantras so I can unlock and, and carry around these, these pieces of wisdom with me. So paradigm, that's the lens through which you see your world. Everybody sees the world differently. There's no objective experience. It's all filtered through our lenses. So nobody's ever right or wrong. Nobody's ever fully good or evil. It's all paradigm. And you must remember this, that you can only ever see through your paradigm. And we can try our hardest to see through the paradigms or walking the shoes of others, see through the eyes of others, but it's, it's a struggle and, and some of us can get a little bit towards that and then a lot of us can't because it, it is genuinely difficult. And I wrote fraternity, brotherhood, and I underlined that, the culprit, who is my brother? Okay, I find that this is the ultimate way to diffuse possible uh, disputes or anger or hostility. And believe me, of, time, of recent times, there's been plenty of that. Now, I've, I've, there's been plenty of love, because I like to operate in the conscience level of love. So people reap what they sow and hey, we've got a nice community. Everybody's really nice. Everybody's like wanting the best for themselves, for other people, for the world. And that's wonderful. But hey, it's this dark times, man. And, and, and it's been difficult and people have been plunged into despair and there's been a lot of difficulties. And hey, I find the, the easiest way to diffuse perhaps somebody who might be angry is to not meet it with anger. So when you're parenting, um, and again, this is coming from someone who's not a parent, but who's got their mind uh, and eyes very on the future for that. Um, children are very perceptive to your state, yeah, your, your baseline state. If you're angry, they think you're angry with them. And this is the same for other people. You might notice this with friends. Um, if you're in an off mood or a family member's in an off mood, you might think, oh, I've done something wrong because we're all quite egotistical and we think we're the center of the world. And very often someone's just upset for some other reason. Now, if somebody you don't know is angry at you, road rage or just pissed off in, in, in the world with you, they don't know you. So you think, well, paradigm and fraternity. This is my brothers as a human being, and they can pick up on it if you do interact. If you think it genuinely, they can tell. They can discern it in your eyes and the way you handle yourself. Don't meet anger with anger. It doesn't, doesn't help anything. Um, you think, this person's, what, what kind of day has this person had? And then think about what days you've had. And if you've been through similarly shit times, you might go, well, you know what, if they've even had like a day that's half as bad as mine or even twice as bad as mine. Whew. So, I mean, this is, this is really good. And can you see, we haven't even got halfway through the first maxim of book two. And there's already so much to think about, so much to apply. And I really like this. He says, who is my brother and endowed with reason and a share of the divine. 
So whoever, whatever you think, maybe you don't like this person, but they do have the ability to reason and they're endowed with a share of divine. They have a spark inside them. They're living, they're breathing, they're operating in the world. So it's a good thing to remind yourself of. Um, and then that powerful ending. And what is irritation or aversion, but a form of obstruction? This is a mindset shift, paradigm. So you go, right, I don't want to obstruct. I don't want people to obstruct me and I don't want to obstruct them. And we all want to live in harmony, <laughs> okay? Um, so if you're getting irritated or avoiding certain things, this is obstruction. So he's basically saying, don't get irritated. Um, so that's, that's an example of what I go through when I'm reading the meditations. Okay, let's do another one, why not? Um, this is a good one, this is from book four. Do not act as if you had 10,000 years to live. The inescapable is hanging over your head. While you have life in you, while you still can, make yourself good. Now. Obviously, we are all aware on some level that the inescapable is hanging over our heads. But the time to make ourselves good is now. The only life we have is right now, the one that we're living in this second. The past is gone, the future has not arrived yet. It's presence. That's why um, Aurelius is almost Buddhist in his outlook, isn't he? Um, the reason we do things that are not in our best interest is because of the inescapable hanging over our head. If you think about drug addiction, alcoholism, gambling, uh, wanton sexual activity without meaning, just frivolous, uh, binge-watching, mind-numbing television. Keep in mind that I am not implying or, or weighing down on any judgment here and actually coming from the side of complete understanding, complete identification, in all honesty. I think we can all identify with escapism. Um, we know on some level, memento mori, remember when you must die, we know that life is short. And to be honest, <laughs> we're going to be dead a whole lot longer than we are alive. So we do things to not face our mortality, to avoid it. But the time, the time to make yourself good is now. Procrastination is very, very harmful. And sometimes we do even more harmful things to other people. We know what we should do. We already know what we should do. And we just avoid thinking about it. If you don't know where to start, you might want to start thinking about your principles. Um, it's hard to govern ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis if we're not living a principle-based life. If we're just living in reaction mode, yeah, based on emotions in the moment, then that's not good. We're not going to get anywhere. We're not going to be a boon upon society. We're not going to improve our lot. But if we have a set of principles, things that are important to us for how, we gonna, how we're going to move about in the world, um, then that's a great place to start. Do you know your principles? Do you have a, a list of rules and guiding precepts that you've given a lot of thought and care to, that you've written down, that you revise intermittently, maybe every couple of months, about how to live your life? If not, you might want to try it. It's really quite a soothing practice. I would recommend you do some breathing meditation, go for a run, go for a hike in nature, and just think about all, all the things going on in your life and how you, if you were operating at sort of a perfect level, what would that look like? What would you have to stop doing? These are, these are good questions to ask intermittently, and of course nobody's perfect. People have bad days, people have strings of bad days, and that's understandable. Um, but if we have those guiding precepts at, at the core, um, then we can deviate a little bit, and we'll try it and always come back to them. Now I wanna read out just one more, and then I really wanna hear from you, and I want you to pop down a meditation in the comments when you have time. Um, this one is a nice one. And it, it encapsulates a lot of the lessons that run through the meditations as a whole. Um, two core lessons from the meditations are one, externals can't piss you off or harm you. And two, soon you will die. Those are two core uh, foundational tenets running underneath uh, the meditations. Now listen to this. Do away with the judgment and the notion I have been harmed is done away with. Do away with that notion and the harm itself is gone. Uh, this reminds me of an Eleanor Roosevelt quote, a very stoic Eleanor Roosevelt quote that goes like this. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Um, all of our problems, or almost all of them, are self-created. Does that mean circumstances are, are, are perfect? No, it doesn't. We can be in a bad environment and a bad life circumstance, and we all go through them. People will die. People walk out of your life, um, Businesses fail. Uh, lots of bad stuff 
happens and that is par for the course but you can really if you do away with the ego you do away with the lens through which you see yourself like a lot of people end up hurting each other over respect disrespect if you shed the ego no one can disrespect you and nobody can harm you no one can hurt you without your consent if you end up being hurt you've given your consent and you've bought into it and that's important that's a hard thing to wrangle as well and that's a very difficult one to take on did marcus aurelius himself actually take on board all of this life wisdom all this stuff that he was given to himself hey who knows i don't think so did he turn the cheek like uh, jesus did he ever not get hurt by someone saying something or someone doing something did he ever not feel anxiety and fear and worry about the future and have regret over the past hey is human and I think the meditations reveal that and very often when people come to you for for advice um, you forget that sometimes the best person to get to give advice to is actually yourself and the person that you need to listen to is actually yourself and I think we find a little slice of ourself a little slice of the divine in Marcus Aurelius's meditations please let me know your favorite meditation in the comments below or just one that occurs to you and we're gonna pick them all apart at another time thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoy the meditations if you've enjoyed this video please hit the like and subscribe because that tells me to keep making more content thank you for watching and have a lovely day